Uh, we have a conversation in February. Yes. I don't know if you remember. I do. Uh, with La Opinion, talking about what you were doing for the campaigns, um, leading the campaign for the Democrats in the Congress. And you were having, I suppose, a different perspective that you're having at this moment. The first question that I did, that I asked you that time, it was, what was your perspective at that moment happening in November of this year? So you told me that you were working very hard. I remember that. And that you have many plans. You were waiting for some specific uh, districts to win. For example, in New York, in Tom Suosi. Suosi? Suosi. Suosi. It's always like a Tom Suosi. Uh, it was very important for you, for him. So let's start from there. Okay. So how important was that winning? That was huge. But he won. And um, it was a big race. Won because... It was a special election. Um, we had a year of chaos, dysfunction, extremism from House Republicans. New York Three had had a representative who was a fraud. And um, this was an important election. And it was fought over some important issues that um, were critical to the community. And Tom Swazi was a strong voice. He spoke on the issues that people cared about. Um, he was answering questions and talking to voters all day long. And he won. And he won because he's a strong voice for his district. He was talking to voters. And his opponent was hiding away. And he won big. So now he has to compete again. Mm -hmm. So yes. what is going to happen there? How do you feel in this competition? So I feel good. The lines in New York changed a little bit uh, since then. They had some redistricting adjustments. Uh, but Tom's in a strong position. He's one of our frontliners. So our frontliners are the folks who are running for re-election in our battleground districts. And so we have 31 of them across the country. We They are all authentic, independent-minded, results-oriented leaders all across the country. They're doing a great job, and, um, and I think he's got strong support in his community, and that means good things in November. Is this part of the campaign uh, from Red to Blue? So he's in, we, Red to Blue are our folks who or candidates who are running to flip districts or who are filling open seats. But because Tom is now a member of Congress, again, he was... Running, he was basically part of right. it, but he's so not So he now. is now part of um, our frontline program, yeah. which is incumbents running for yeah. re-election. So how is going the other campaign from um, from red to blue? How um, is going? You know, we have 30 red to blue candidates across the country. This is part so of the campaign. The, they are all over the country. They're in New York and California and Iowa and Nebraska and Alabama. Um, we have folks running everywhere across the country to pick up seats or to keep seats that um, are open seats where their current member of Congress might be retiring or running for a different office. So we have 30 of them across the country and they are all doing well. They are uh, raising their Republican opponents. They are strong voices in their community and they're running strong campaigns. So we need four more seats to take back the majority in the House of Representatives. We have 30 seats we're on offense on, and I think we have opportunities with all of those to help us take back the majority. Is there any district that you are worried for, particularly, or not special? You know, I think we've always been running ahead. We Even um, when we talked last time, we've had strong support. I mean, this election is really a choice between chaos, dysfunction, and extremism, or folks who are going to stand up to govern, who are going to work through hard problems, really fight for the needs of their communities, and fight to get things done. Um, we want to, we, people like me came to Congress to get things done. We have Republicans who aren't interested in governing, and I think they're going to pay for it in November. What change with the changing of uh, leadership in the, in the party? Because now we have BP Harris leading the candidacy for the presidency. Uh, President Biden was doing a different kind of job and many things happened in between. So what is the difference between at that, that moment and this moment? Well, I think you could probably see it here. Um, we are in Chicago. The energy and enthusiasm is strong. We had right after Vice President Harris announced her candidacy, at the DCCC, we had our, our largest online fundraising day of the cycle, uh, almost a million dollars in the 24 hours after she announced. We've had strong fundraising across our candidates, um, across 
Democrats across the board have seen our numbers increase, and we've seen volunteers turning out to knock on doors to make phone calls. So there is great energy enthusiasm. You see it here, but we are feeling it all across the country. And we're going to work hard, take nothing for granted, work hard to turn out every vote, but we're going to take back the majority of the House, and we're going to have Kamala Harris as the next president of the United States. Do you States. feel that something uh, changed in the different districts that you are working, in, particularly these 30 districts that are particularly important for you after the BP came as a candidate or not? You can see this yet. Well, I, our folks were running strong, but I think when, when you have increased enthusiasm and energy, that helps get the vote out. And we know that some races can be very close. So voters turning out, casting their ballots all across the district makes a huge difference. And that's a really a big place where our investment goes is to make sure voters know who's on the ballot in their district, to make sure they know what they stand for, and to make sure they remember to vote because so many people stay on the sidelines. I think folks are energized. They're out in their communities. I think we're going to work hard to turn out the vote in all the communities and all of our districts. And when we turn out the vote, we win. What is the most important aspects or the highlights of the congressional agenda from Democrats? Well, I think for one thing we've heard from folks across the country are is affordability and making sure we're addressing the costs that families are facing. Um, so housing, making sure we have more affordable housing throughout the country, that we have a tax policy that isn't just about tax breaks for the wealthy and well-connected, but that we are focused on making sure we have a fair tax system that supports and grows the middle class. Uh, things like the child tax credit that helps families, helps our kids get off to a great start because we know when our kids have a great start, they have incredible opportunities. Uh, we want to make sure that we are defending Social Security and Medicare, that we make sure we continue to lower prescription drug costs that we already have lowered. Um, these are part of the policies that Democrats have been fighting for when we are the majority and will continue to fight for. Um, and we should have partners in moving forward, but Republicans aren't interested in governing. They can't agree with each other. They can't pass anything. So when we're in the majority and with President Harris, we're going to have an incredible opportunity to really put policy in place that supports our communities, families all across the country. How important is the Latino vote in these districts that you're working for? The Latino vote is very critical in districts across the country. And we definitely have some districts that have even larger Latino populations than others. We have a program, we call it Power the People, that has been very focused on making sure we get out the vote with communities of color, that we are communicating with people information um, in ways that they consume that information. People aren't all watching TV anymore. They're using YouTube or on certain social media. They want their information um, maybe in English, maybe in other languages. And so we are working hard to make sure that we have that information to deliver. So we've invested money in understanding where people are getting their information, um, the Latino community and how they're consuming information, making sure that we are providing the information so that they see it in a way um, that helps them understand who's running for office and what their opportunities are. And we wanna make sure we get out the vote. So we're gonna continue to engage voters all across the country. And part of that is working with community leaders and others because they're the ones who help get out the vote. Because um, when people turn out the vote, we win. Thank you so much. Hey, thank you.